Welcome, welcome to The Belfry. Good morning, it's really great to see you here. Uh, this is our 11 a.m. service, so welcome to everyone who's joining us uh, from our regular congregation uh, and welcome to anyone who's joining us for the first time uh, or from uh, a different part of the world or a different church. Uh, it's really good to be together this morning uh, as we worship God. We're beginning a new series this morning. We're going to be looking at the Psalms. Uh, we're going to be looking at what they mean and what it means for us to be human. And Emma is going to introduce that for us in a second. So in a short while, we are going to have our um, action song, uh, which is going to be led by Tom and Liz, followed by our reading, followed by a talk by Emma, followed by some prayer by the Burbages. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the service and I will see you after that for the notices. Let's pray as we begin our services. You might want to get up, stand up, assume the position ready for the action song. Father, we pray this morning that you would fill us by your spirit, that you would unite us together as church. Lord Jesus, we pray this morning that we would worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, amen. of love. 
Psalm 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree, planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Emma and I am the Assistant Children and Families Worker here at the Belfry. We're starting a new series in church today on the Psalms and we started right at the beginning with the very first one today. For those of you who might not have heard of the Psalms before or need a little reminder, you can find the book of Psalms in the Old Testament and it's a collection of 150 songs and poems and prayers and reflections and hymns all written to God. Now we think around half of them were written by King David of Goliath and Bathsheba fame, but all of them were written by people who were speaking to and speaking with God. Now, some of them are songs of joy, some of them are prayers of thankfulness, some of them are asking God for help, and some of them are even cries of sadness. The Psalms has it all. Now our theme for today is about being blessed, which got me thinking, what does it mean to be blessed? Is it something that you have or something that you do? Is it something you share or something you are? And when I thought about it, I kind of thought maybe it's all of the above. As Christians, we believe that being blessed is that feeling of contentment, of happiness deep within us when we know we've been given something by God. So that could be something that we can hold, something physical that we can thank God for. It could be a friendship. It could be a place we go to, or it could even be a special gift that we have. And so really, it could be something that we share or have or do or feel or even experience. And when I was thinking about this psalm today that we heard read to us by Neil and Jilly, I started to think about sunflowers. Stay with me here. Hopefully it will make sense. Every time Mike and I get home from our daily exercise at the moment, we see this. It's our plant pot that we're growing a sunflower in. We planted it about seven weeks ago and it started out as this little seed, which I'm not sure that you'll be able to see, but it's very small and now it's quite big. And one day we hope that it will flower on top and be bright and beautiful. Now, unfortunately, it hasn't grown a flower yet and I wasn't able to get a sunflower to show you that. So I've recreated one. We've gone a bit blue Peter again. And this is our sunflower to remind us how beautiful and bright sunflowers are. Every time I see a sunflower, I smile. And here's why this sunflower reminds me of today's reading. The passage said, blessed is the one who, and then says things like, doesn't walk in with people who make bad choices or stand in the way of people who choose to do naughty things or sit with people who would laugh at what is good and right in the world. What this means is it's all about positioning. Who we choose to surround ourselves with will help us to be blessed, to be happy and to please God as they'll lead us to grow and flourish in our lives. So who we spend time with, who we listen to, who we learn from and who we trust is really, really important. Just in the same way that we need to position ourselves well with people, this plant pot has to be positioned well outside our house. It couldn't be somewhere that was full of weeds. It couldn't have dry dirt or be in a shady area. We even had to bring it in from the wind a couple of weeks ago to protect it. It was going sideways. Funnily enough, sunflowers need sun to flower. I know, right? I think there's a reason for their name. It would be no good if we tried to grow it inside the house or hide it away or keep it in a shady spot. They need to be out in the open, in the sunshine to thrive and to flourish. 
As Christians, we believe we need light too. But our light isn't the sun, it's Jesus. We often hear at at Christmas that light has come into the world. And in John chapter 8 verse 12, Jesus even calls himself the light of the world. So we could say that if we position ourselves with Jesus and walk with him and listen to him and learn from him, then we will blossom like this sunflower. That all seems to have worked out rather well, doesn't it? Almost like I've planned this. (laughs) Then the psalm goes on to say about delighting in the law of the Lord day and night. That sounds quite fancy and we might not be sure what that means. But what that's saying is it's talking about reading the Bible, listening to stories about Jesus and paying attention to the stories that Jesus told. It's about learning from all these things that God tells us and teaches us in the Bible and making good choices now because of them. Jesus teaches a story about this, the parable of the wise and foolish builders, which you can find in the New Testament in Matthew chapter 7 verses 24 to 27 if you want to look it up later. It's important what we pay attention to and what he is showing us and that we live our lives for him. When Mike and I came to planting this sunflower, we had to read upon advice on how best to help it grow and more importantly, survive, given my track record with previous attempts. We could have decided not to do anything, not to read anything and just to wing it a bit. We could have read the advice and ignored it, chosen to plant it somewhere else or just throw the seeds on top of some soil and hope for the best. A bit like building a house on sand in the parable I just mentioned. But then the flower wouldn't grow in the way that it was supposed to. And so it is with us. This psalm reminds us that God wants us to be happy. He wants us to be blessed, to grow and to thrive and to shine. He wants us to learn from him and be more like Jesus every day with the things we say and do and think. Because then we will be really blessed really happy because we'll be living our best lives. God doesn't want us to make bad choices or be surrounded by people who encourage us to do naughty things. A bit like if this sunflower was amongst slugs and snails because it wouldn't lead to good things or a healthy plant. The plant might wither and struggle to grow. Just like if we didn't have people to encourage us and be kind to us and to love us. It's why we love our children and youth groups here, our belfry groups, our church community, as we gather, whether that's virtually or in person. We need each other to flourish. Just like this sunflower, God wants us to radiate light and brightness and happiness to all who see us. That's what this psalm is saying when it says about growing fruit and not withering. We will grow strongly and healthily with God and bloom into something so special and so beautiful, just as we were made to be. So, I hope whenever you see a sunflower, you smile. I hope you know that you are loved by God. You are so special and you were made to know God and to make him known to others. I hope you surround yourselves with good people and influences, and I hope you shine brightly to others. Be blessed, be happy, and be a blessing. Bring happiness to others, today and always. Amen. So we've come to the part of our service where we are going to pray together. And to do this, we would love you to grab yourself a piece of paper and some pens, colouring pencils, crayons, whatever you have nearby. And we would love you to draw a picture of a flower. The flower can look however you would like it to look, get creative. But one thing that we would ask is that the middle, the centre of the flower is big enough that you can write inside or maybe draw a picture. So we'll give you a few seconds to do that and get drawing, get creative, and draw yourself a flower. And as you are drawing the flower, 
We would love you to start thinking of things that you are thankful for. Those blessings that are in your life, the things that you have seen God doing. I don't know about you, but in such a difficult time, a really great thing for us to do and to remind ourselves of, it's something that I've been doing, is the good things that God has been doing in my life, in my friends' lives and in the world. So, what we would love you to do is to write down in your petals on your flower, is to write down the things that you are thankful to God for. Maybe it's something about God that you are thankful for, the fact that God is your friend, your helper, your healer. Or maybe it's something as simple as the sunshine or having good food uh, during lockdown. I'm definitely thankful for friendships and for my church, the Belfry. So write down these things in your petals on your flower. And as you write those things down, I would love to pray a prayer of thankfulness to God now. So Lord Jesus, we thank you for your goodness. God, we thank you that you love to bless us. And even in the darkest of times, you are still good. We lift all of these things that we are thankful for up to you now. And we say, God, we love you. We praise you and thank you. Amen. Amen. So hopefully your flower now looks something like this. Filled with things that God has blessed you with. Reminders of how good God is and things that you are thankful for. So we're now going to think about the centre of your flower. So in the centre of your flower, we'd like you to write people or situations you'd like God to bless. So there might be friends or family that you'd like God to bless them. They might not even know God, but you'd still like him to bless them and maybe even for them to come to know God. Or it might be situations that you'd like God to bless. So maybe maybe hospitals or doctor's surgeries or places where pe or schools where people are working so hard during this current time. So maybe you'd like God to bless them. So for me, I'm going to put in the middle, I'd like God to bless my brother and my sister. We're both having a very different time of lockdown. My brother's working very hard. My sister's had at university exams. And I'd like God to bless them. So take some time now to write those names in the middle there. And then I'm going to pray over us as you do that. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are good. And we just pray that you will come and you will bless and you will heal and you will bring joy and peace to all of these situations. Father God, I pray that anyone who is poorly, that we know you would heal and that you'd be close to them. Father God, I pray that for those who don't yet know you, that they would come to know you in this time, that you are good, that you are our saviour and you are our healer. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. And finally, we would love you to place your flower um, on the table or on your lap so that it's facing at you. And we would love you to uh, pop your hands on top of the flower so that it's actually covering it up. This way you can't see the words that you've written down. Um, you can't see the, the good words that, and the good things that God has done. And we're actually going to spend some time now saying sorry to God. And that's really important for us to do. To ask God to forgive us for the times that maybe we've let him down or let other people down. So as we cover up our flower now, why don't you bring to mind the things that you have maybe thought or said or done this week that have let God down? And God, we say we're sorry. We say we're sorry for the times this week where we have not looked to you. I'm sorry for the times, Lord, where I have been selfish and have not put you first. 
God, we ask that you will forgive us and help us to live our life this week coming, always looking to you and always looking out for other people. Amen. Amen. So if you'd now like to turn your hands open so you can see your beautiful flower underneath them. And as we hold out our hands like this, we do this rather a lot at church when we're asking God to fill us with his Holy Spirit. So we're going to ask that now, that God would fill us with his spirit so that we would be able to go out to the world around us, whether that's uh, physically or virtually, and bless other people and show God's love and joy and show off and be thankful for all that God is doing and pointing people to God. Mm. So Heavenly Father, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Let us be a people that are overflowing with joy and thankfulness and excitement in this tough time, Lord. Let us be filled with your Holy Spirit and let us be able to bless all of those in our homes and all of those that we might connect with online. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. And as we draw our prayers to a close, why don't we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much, everyone. So uh, I've got a few notices before we close off our service uh, with our final song. Uh, so just to let you know, first off, a quick reminder, if you need anything, pastoral support, how to find a Belfry group, how to join one, uh, what's going on to hear about how you get in touch or to sign up for our newsletter, uh, visit our website, belfry.org. Uh, and you can uh, navigate that page and find out everything that we do and sign up for stuff. Uh, also, uh, if you would like to give, uh, um, most people at the moment are giving via direct debit, but some people like to give there and then. So if you'd like to do that, you can do that online. Uh, that is belfry.org forward slash giving. Uh, you can give a one-off gift or you can set up a direct debit if you would like to do that. So thank you to everyone who's been doing that. Uh, also, just to say, we have coffee after our service on Zoom. Uh, we don't provide the coffee, but we do provide the Zoom. Uh, so if you go to belfry.org forward slash coffee uh, and click on the uh, link to the 11 a.m. service, that will help you register. Uh, you'll be sent the link to join. And the password for this morning is peace11 with a capital P. Uh, we're going to before we go into our final song, which is uh, The Blessing, uh, we are going to have a short video. Uh, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, we've been collecting 30 second testimonies. Uh, we've put a few of these together so you can see them. Uh, you can also visit the, the website to see more of these videos. Uh, but it's just really good to, uh, to celebrate together uh, and to encourage one another with these testimonies. So we're going to see a short video now, uh, followed by our final song. I am grateful for getting to spend extra time with my son, including planting plants. Should we water them? Yeah. We're really thankful for Matthew and Sam Porter. Not only do they lead the church fantastically well, but our Belfry group too have so much time for us um, during this time that we're in at the moment and we're really grateful. Thank you. I'm grateful that our son Christopher has been able to live with us here in York for the duration of the lockdown. He's been working from home here rather than being in his little flat in London on his own. What are you grateful for? My friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something I'm so thankful for at the moment is the community that has been forming on my street. I've lived here my whole life and for the first time people are starting to get to know each other. Everyone is helping each other out with groceries and gardening and we've been having socially distanced barbecues on our driveways. I'm also grateful for the government and for 80% staff wages. It's helped us at Coffee Bike um, hopefully get through all of this. 
the thing that I am thankful for in this season the most is technology that's made it possible to stay in touch with friends and family near and far and the ability to learn to play board games over video calls as well. And I'm also thankful that we've been able to take in a teenager from York who needed a safe place to stay during the lockdown and he's also living with us at the moment. Hayley, what are you grateful for? For getting to know someone new through the body system. And I'm thankful for wonderful friends who drop off uh, gifts both in person and secretly, uh, whether that's cake or Italian themed deliciousness.
Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it's been really great to uh, see you and I hope to see some of you uh, in the coffee time at Zoom later on. So I'm going to pray for us uh, as we close our service. So Father God, we pray now uh, that you would unite us by your spirit. Fill us afresh now that as we go into our weeks, Lord, that you would be with us to give us the strength and the resources that we need in order to deal with whatever life has to throw at us. Uh, and we pray that for each and every one of us now, in Jesus' name. Amen.